Hello, welcome to the Summer League Women's Basketball Season Preview. Tom Neiman along with the Professor Brad Newitt. And uh, basketball across the country set to start on November 25th this year. Bradley, uh, there's going to be some non-conference games. We think for our teams around here, maybe not as many as we're used to, but it's going to be interesting because things are still evolving right now. Yeah, they really are. You know, you look at what these coaches have had to go through here the last couple of months. First of all, the season date got moved back about two weeks and the number of games got shortened. So that really threw a lot of wrenches into non conference scheduling games that were planned had to get canceled games that were there maybe had to get moved and so these coaches they've been spending a lot of time on the phone here lately I think trying to get this all ironed out I think a lot of teams are though are getting pretty close yeah just trying to get games in and then the summer league season is set to start on January 2nd but there's a twist in that schedule as well can you kind of explain how this is going to work yeah, it's going to be kind of like a double round robin. And so uh, the interesting part about this is the Summer League is going to be playing on Friday and Saturdays, and they're going to be doing it at the same place. So, for example, Denver might travel to Tulsa to play Oral Roberts. They'll play them twice, Friday and Saturday in Tulsa. That will be their two games against each other for the Summer League season. And then the next week you kind of reset the deck and you play another matchup. And so it will be a, a much different look, but I think the big thing is, Tom, we got to get these games in. This probably gives us our best chance to do that. All right. Uh, Purdue-Fort Wayne moves out of the Summer League this year onto the Horizon League. Kansas City comes back into the Summer League. Excited about that. Uh, we have all the head coaches and a player interview from each team coming up here in the next hour of the show. The coaches, the sports information people, and the media all get to vote in the preseason poll every season. And here you go for the women, South Dakota and South Dakota State getting some first place votes. The Coyotes and the Jackrabbits have each won four regular season titles in the last nine years, and this is kind of business as usual going into the season. Yeah, no surprise to see them at the top. Maybe a little bit of a surprise in how those first place votes got distributed. I think both these teams to me look very even coming into this year, but South Dakota again coming off such a tremendous season last year where they went undefeated in Summit League play, only lost two games all year. So not a surprise, I think, to see them up at number one. And then as you look at the rest of the field, you know, starting three through nine, I think there's a lot of possibilities that could happen there. Um, you know, Western Illinois and Oral Roberts have some dynamic players back. North Dakota State, a team that's certainly on the rise. And Kansas City, Tom, you mentioned a new member, but a team that won the WAC last year regular season. I think they could make some noise in their first season back in the Summer League, too. So we are going to count them down uh, from last to first, according to that preseason poll. Omaha, starting with the Mavericks, going into their ninth season in the Summit League now. Best finish for the Maverick women, 8-8 eight and eight in the league. That was in 2017. They won a tournament game this, uh, that year. But since then, Bradley, the last two seasons, the Maverick women, 4-24 and 24 in their Summit League games. Well, they've really had some struggles scoring the basketball on that stretch, and that's one thing that they've really got to work on to get fixed. They've got 12 players back, so they've got a great nucleus of players to try to build around to fix that. But scoring the ball and getting more consistent offensively are certainly going to be important for Carrie Banks as she takes over here. All right, as you said, there are three new women's head coaches in the league this year, one of them in Omaha. Carrie Banks takes over there. She was an assistant at Ohio State for four years before coming to Omaha. I had been an assistant coach for 12 years and, um, you know, just one of my goals was to be a head coach. And so when I got the call and I just, you know, there was a lot of enthusiasm from the administration when I saw the campus and I, I just thought that it was a hidden gem. And I thought this is a place where I want to go and I want to start an amazing tradition. Um, and I felt like that everything that needed to be in place to help me support that was there. So it was something that was completely not on my radar at all, but it turned into a no-brainer for me. One of the things you want to do whenever you take over a program is get to know the team, earn that trust, and uh, we've had to do it through technology. So um, that process, you know, it was different, but one of the really cool things about the pandemic is it slowed everybody down. So it gave us the opportunity to have more time to be able to build those relationships and that trust. We've spent a lot of time just working on them getting better individually. I want when they go out on the court, um, I want them to feel unrestricted. I want them to have freedom of play. I want, I've talked about pace a lot. I want to play fast. Um, but when they get out there, I want them to be able to play and read and make decisions in space. I want them to love the game and, and I want them to go out there and I want them to compete at the highest level every single day. And that has been something that we have just been working on. It's just competing and competing consistently. So for us, year one, it's just that competitive attitude every single day, no matter who your opponent is. It will be about this team right here getting better and competing. 
And yes, the Mavs do have 12 players back from last year. They know each other pretty well, even if Coach Banks is just getting to know them. But you see, just 2-14 and 14 in the Summit League last year. Lost to South Dakota in the first round of the Summit League tournament. Mariah Murdy is really good. And she talked to us about the mix of players on the Omaha roster from all over the country and all over the world. 2020 has been a crazy year um, for race relations in the United States. And I think we've done a good job on our team of discussing it and making it a priority that we, not a, that we focus on, but it's something that we acknowledge. So we have five foreigners. We have two from Australia, Sweden, Brazil, and Cyprus. And we were just all talking about how different it is between America and those different countries and just talking about our experiences. And I think that's one of the really unique things about Omaha is we have all this diversity on our team and we still love each other the same. So that's something really special that we have. And she, she seems like a wonderful person, by the way, probably an all summer league player by the end of the season this year. The Mavericks though, Bradley, uh, what's a realistic goal for them to get out of that nine spot that they're in in the preseason poll? Well, it starts with improvement. And, and I like what uh, Coach Banks said there, you know, about really trying to just get better improvement for her team individually because it starts there. Um, and again, getting some traction offensively. I think if they can improve their skill level there, get some more point production, that'll certainly give them a chance to get some wins. All right, uh, the number 18 in, in the women's preseason poll, University of North Dakota. They've been in the Summer League for two years now. Uh, the women's team has gone 6-10 and 10 in the league both of those years, Brad. Some really good individual players every year, just not quite able to put it together. Yeah, I think they've, they've had some moments where they've looked really good and been able to compete with some of the top teams in the Summit League. But, you know, getting the consistency game in, game out has been their struggle, especially on the road. And uh, I think that's one thing that they need to take a step in. Again, this is another program, Tom, that has a lot of players back that they can really build around. And uh, another one of the new head coaches in the league this year, Mallory Bernhard, moves up from assistant to head coach now at UND. And here she is with Alex Heinert. Thanks, Tom. First off, Mallory, congratulations on getting ready for your first season in charge of UND women's basketball. Uh, with that in mind, how have preparations been going for the 2020-21 season? Things have gone well. We've done a lot of individual skill development, maybe small group sessions, um, something we hadn't done a whole lot of in the past couple of years and really wanted to get back to that. So working hard on developing those individual skills and, you know, the better the individual skills, the better the team plays. So a lot of that stuff has gone on this um, preseason and then just other preparations, of course, are making adjustments to our, uh, our new offense, new defense, those kinds of things that we're putting in. Yeah, it is your eighth season on staff. Of course, you're first in charge of the program. You mentioned a little bit there some of the changes that have taken place. What changes do you want to see implemented come game time? And what kind of style of, of play do you want your teams to have this year? Defensively, we've struggled these past couple of years um, leading the nation literally in fouls. And so if, if we want to be successful, that's something we've got to change. And we knew right away that we needed to adjust in that way. You know, it compromises our lineups, but also is putting teams at the free throw line. So there's been a lot of defensive things we've worked on. Um, and then offensively, you, you know our team from watching them in the past. We have a lot of versatility. We have a lot of players that can do a lot of things with longer guards that can maybe get inside or big posts that can step outside and shoot. So offensively, we're just really trying to play to those strengths that we have, we believe, mismatch problems. It's a team that brings back a lot of experience and really does just bring back basically everybody other than a change at point guard with Elena Jarnett graduating and Michaela Wallace transferring in from Evansville. You know, it's, it's pretty much the same group of kids. And that, I'm assuming that continuity from last year to this year, especially given how everything else has gone with 2020, that has to make your transition now to the head coaching position that much easier it does you know we didn't have to spend you know the first couple months learning what the players strengths or weaknesses are and then deciding how we wanted to go from there we knew that coming in what they were capable of so it really helped and we were able to just kind of jump into it right away and like I said we've still worked significantly on that skill development piece um, just because again everything we're doing offensively is about taking advantages um, and we need to create as many advantages as possible Last thing for you now, when you look at, at this group, and really we're not, we're not that far away from a, a Summer League semifinal berth just two seasons ago, and from Big Sky regular season championships in 2017 and 2014, you were a part of those teams. How does this group get back to those levels and, and start to try and compete for championships in the Summer League this coming season? 
I think it really comes down to practice and bringing the competition level every single day in practice. We've cranked it up in practice. We're seeing them compete um, every single day and it's every single drill we're going to bring game intensity to. And they've done that. Um, obviously there's a lot of things we need to bring to the court and confidence is a big one of those. And especially kind of that bounce back. We've always had, I would say maybe a little bit of a letdown in game and had a hard time rebounding from it. And that's something we've worked on hard is just the confidence, the mindset of we're going to make mistakes. Teams are going to go on runs, but we got to respond. The Fighting Hawks, 500 overall last year, got knocked out in the first round of the tournament by South Dakota State. Uh, Melissa Leet missed 10 games last year with a hand injury. Don't think she did a block in a shot, but she did lead the league in block shots per game. Uh, Julia Fleece was second team all summit last year, and she is excited for one thing about her new head coach. That's something we couldn't be more happy about is getting somebody that we already know and that already knows how we play. So she knew where what needed to be fixed from last year and the bugs and things that we'd run into. Her coaching style is very much <laughs> like her assistant style, but I now she's way more vocal and that's been exciting to, to see that. And um, she was on championship teams when she was here. So it's always uh, fun to see that um, co competition come out. And I think she's been invoking that in a lot of us. We've already had two black eyes in practices, I think. Like we have really been getting after and getting at each other, but in a really good and like um, healthy environment. Well, North Dakota has some size and some scoring coming back, Bradley. They've got all those freshmen that they played last year uh, back this year. But coach talked about playing defensively without yes. fouling. We've talked about that. That's a big deal, isn't it? It is. It's huge for them. A, when they were fouling a lot, teams were scoring lots of points from the free throw line. North Dakota was a team that was always in foul trouble. That really affected their lineups. I think if they just go to fixing that, that's going to go a long way towards them being a lot more successful in the Summer League. All right, coming up next, two of the big city programs in the Summer League. Denver, the other team with a new head coach. The Pios have to replace one of the best players in the league, though. And Kansas City is back. We'll hear from the Roos. Welcome back to the Summer League Women's Basketball Season Preview. Denver is up next, picked seventh in the league this year. They've been interesting, Bradley, in the last handful of years or so. A couple of seasons were down, but over 500 in league play the last couple of years. What gives with Denver? Well, they're a team that's really scored the basketball well overall, but I think they've relied on their offense a lot of times to win games for them, and sometimes that's not there. They're a team that like to play a lot of up-tempo basketball as well. We'll see if that changes with a coaching change that they have now this year. Yeah, new head coach as well in Denver this year. Here is our Brian Sean with Dosha Woods. Dosha, uh, I can't imagine the challenges that you face in your first few months on the job. I think anytime you're taking over a program as a first-year head coach, there's things you have to overcome, but doing it in the midst of a pandemic, take me through what this process has been like for you. I, honestly, for me, and, and I don't know if it's getting the position here, but I've developed this new sense of patience that like every day I'm like, is this really you? Like, are you this patient? But I think the pandemic has really helped with that. I think I honestly feel like I have a slight advantage of just it's not the usual, you know, you get a position, I got a position late July, we'd normally be recruiting. And because everything has had to slow down, I feel like that's really given me an opportunity to transition a lot easier than if this was traditional time. So I tend to look on the positive side. And for me, that, that's that been the most rewarding to not have all the usual pressures that would come with a first time head coach during this time. And I think, Dosha, when you're taking over a program, you're trying to instill your culture, your style of play. What, what should we expect to see from the pioneers on the court this year? Run. We, we, we want to run, you know, we're at 5280. We talk about it every day. Uh, we're going to race that uh, elevation that we have here in Denver and we want to be able to run, uh, run on both sides of the ball. And, and I think our players, uh, they're transitioning to it. I would say, you know, who likes conditioning, who likes running, but I think uh, it, it always feels great once you get to that level that you didn't feel like you were capable of, but we, we want to play up tempo style. We want to be able to run. And you take over a group that does have some talent coming back that's been through a lot of the battles. Claire Grit comes to mind. A couple of youngsters that I think really stood out. Jasmine Jeffcoat's been through the battles as well. Uh, how does your personnel fit up so far with the way you want to play and your style? You know, that honestly might take us some time. Um, I, I tell the players all the time that, you know, they were 
I, I picked them. They didn't necessarily pick me. And, and, you know, the first two questions I got asked when I got the position, it was, am I getting rid of anybody? And my thoughts on mental health. And I think for them, I, will, I really want to put them in a position to be successful, um, how I want to play. Like I said, you get up and run a little bit more uh, five out motion where there's not a lot of plays. And I know that was something that will be a transition for them. I always like to say, you know, there's two ways to make potato salad. Me personally, I like honey mustard and brown sugar. And so it's going to take me some time to get that then, um, to get those types of ingredients. But we'll work with what we have and, and they are adjusting well to, to the new system. Well, I don't know what the other way to make potato salad is, but I like what she's talking about there. Woods, by the way, is a Western Illinois graduate. She was an assistant coach at Western Illinois for three years. Denver, though, 9-7 and seven in the league last year. Uh, Uju Azudu was great as a freshman last year. Brianna Johnson is their assist leader and their fastest player. Everything is really fast paced, go, go, go. Of course there's teaching moments, but it's really high tempo. We're gonna be out there getting those loose balls. We're gonna be making those open shots and we're gonna be pushing the pace. We're not gonna be tired. So I think that's one thing that you're gonna see out of us. All right, it's gonna be interesting to see how Denver plays this year. Madison Nelson graduated. She led the league last year in scoring and rebounding. Huge loss, obviously, for Denver. Yeah, and you put Lauren Lovin next to her, too, another person they lost. That's almost half their scoring right there, Tom. So they are gonna to have to figure out ways to manufacture points, but it sounds like they still wanna play pretty up tempo basketball, so that should be pretty fun to watch. All right, Kansas City is back in the Summit League. After five years in the WAC, the Roos returned to the Summit this season. Uh, back in 2012, they made it to the Summit League championship game in the tournament, lost to South Dakota State in overtime, had a great player named Diane Hall-Jones. Uh, but the Kansas City women were good when they were in the Summit League before. Yeah, they're a very competitive team, and, and they're coming in with that pedigree as well. They won the WAC regular season last year with their number one seed in their uh, postseason tournament. And this is a team that really hung their hat on defense last year. They were one of the best defensive teams in the WAC, great rebounding team. If they can carry that over now into Summit League play, it'll really serve them well. All right, here's uh, head coach J.C. Hoyt on the shutdown that ended last season when the Roos were really hot, a hot and had a shot at qualifying for the NCAA tournament. You know, nobody could have seen anything like that coming. Um, no one was prepared. Um, it was tremendously hard to, uh, you know, break that news to, to our team. Um, but at the same time, it it was a, a lot bigger stuff going on than just, you know, our, our hopes and dreams of playing in an NCAA tournament. Um, so it was really hard. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we still were able to accomplish what we had set out to do, which was win our conference um, and just had a, a really special season. So I hate the way that it ended, um, but a lot of people were in the same situation. And um, I've been really proud of our team and um, the way that, they have bounced back. Um, of course, we we lost those seniors, but the returners that we have, um, I think it really uh, was something that just gave a lot of perspective on how much we love the game and love getting to do what we do together. Um, so it's in a kind of a weird roundabout way. I, I would I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but I am so proud of our team and the way that they've handled everything. What do we expect from Casey? Is there a a ruse style that we're going to see uh, once you guys get in, back into the league this year? Yeah, well, our style really isn't changing, um, even though we're we're in the new conference, but um, really just a fast-paced, up-and-down style. Um, like I said earlier, we're very balanced, so you can expect uh, a lot of people to contribute um, in the scoring column. Uh, really getting after it defensively. Uh, I do think that we've got a lot of length and athleticism that can uh, – cause some some chaos on the defensive end. Um, but again, just kind of picking your poison on the offensive end. So we, we like to shoot a lot of threes and we like to get after it on, on defense. You had a little taste of some summit competition last year. You played two teams, right? What's kind of your expectations going into the summit? Is it, will it be any drastically different than the lack or what do you think? Yeah, I do think that it's a different style. Uh, I think that uh, the summit is uh, a lot more skilled. I think that um, it's a, a incredibly um, tough conference, just tough, hard nosed players that we have a ton of respect for, you know, certainly feel like we can compete with the best of them. But at the same time, we know that uh, there's never going to be an easy game. 
All right, Kansas City played Denver and Omaha last year, split those two games against summer league teams. Coach Hoyt thinks that Jada Mickens might be a matchup problem for other teams, and Mickens says she might not be the only one. That's hard. I feel like we're very versatile. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we might be a little hard to guard because I feel like we have so much balance and really everyone has some kind of specialty to themselves. I don't know, I feel like it'll be exciting. All right, they are picked to finish sixth uh, in their first season back. That might be a little low, I don't know. I think so, I had them fourth. Yeah. I, I think this is a team that's got great balance like they talked about and a team that will defend. And I think those two things right up there will carry you to some wins in the summer. Like I, I, I like to see what Kansas City can do this year. I'm excited to have them back. Yeah, it is gonna be fun to have them back in the summer league. All right, coming up, uh, North Dakota State. Are the Bison one of the rising programs in the league? Seems like it. Uh, we'll hear from sophomore Ryan Cobbins and head coach Jory Collins coming up. And ORU, Oral Roberts has a ton of great summer league history, and we'll hear how the Golden Eagles are ready to make a move to the top. Welcome back to the Summer League Women's Basketball Preview. North Dakota State, Bradley, picked to finish fifth in the league this year. They really uh, showed some signs of going the right way. Last year in Jory Collins' first year as head coach there, the Bison were 7-9 and nine in the Summer League, won a tournament game last year. Yeah, I loved what Coach Collins did in his first season. I mean, he inherited a program that had really struggled, and not just for a couple of years, for many, many years. And I think he really established a good culture there of, of playing hard and playing basketball the right way. And he's got some experience back now, and he's got some players that have been sitting there in his program waiting to transfer and are now eligible. So I think they're, they're really pointing in the right direction this year. All right, here is Brian Sean with head coach Jory Collins. Jory, now as you look ahead uh, with this group, it, it's a very different looking team than the one you had a year ago. You got some new pieces in, some other ones are gone. What's going to look different with this year's version of the Bison women compared to last year? Yeah, I think, you know, we have a, a – Quite a bit different roster, as you said. I think we only have four players back that actually played on the four of four last year. So um, with 13 on the roster, that's nine new players. All of them obviously bring different elements to the team and, uh, and different attributes. I think we're uh, a faster team, probably a more athletic team, uh, both straight ahead and laterally uh, than we were last year. Um, we we're, we're, have much more depth in ball handling. Uh, last year, we really only had Nicole and Sophia that we felt comfortable with the ball in their hands. And, and now we have up to five people that I think could handle the ball regularly for us. So that's a little bit different and, and something that was necessary for us to improve on. I know you had that lull like everybody had where you're not really weren't able to do a whole lot. But when you got everybody back, are you thankful that you at least had last year to get everybody acclimated to you before all this other stuff happened? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, especially the kids sitting out. You know, Emily Binky, who's a redshirt freshman, and, and Marie Olson and, and, and Heaven, uh, who were at least in practice and around every day. Um, that was easier when we did get to do some things in the summer. And, and even the ones, uh, that, you know, Ryan as a freshman last year, and, and Dietz and Michelle and Olivia, uh, we're still new. I mean, we're still fresh with each other. It's only been one year. Uh, under our tutelage here. So uh, there's still things to learn every single day. There's still habits to be built with our group. Are the expectations higher now for this group after taking a step forward last year about trying to take that next step, whatever that may be? Yeah, I think they definitely are. I think we all feel like I can see it in our players' face, like, hey, we, we have some pieces here. Uh, we're a better basketball team overall. Um, and I think our expectations, like you said, are higher. Um, we expect to be in a lot more games. We expect to be more competitive. We expect to win more games. Um, you know, you never know what the season at this point is going to look like, given all the circumstances around it. Uh, but I know when the ball does go up and it's our time to be out there, uh, that we're going to have a pretty good team on the floor. All right, Joy, appreciate the time, man. Okay, thank you. All right, Bison did get uh, that Summer League tournament win last year over Denver. Uh, Geis LaRova is a really good shooter for them. Ryan Cobbins was in the running for Freshman of the Year last year, and she is excited about the newcomers on this year's team. With the recruiting class that we have, I think we can only go up. Uh, with the little returners that we do have, it helps us with experience. But as far as you know, improvement goes, I think that it's pretty night and day, so that's exciting. When we get up and down, everyone's making plays, everyone's ability to score is at such a high level and that's exciting and it kind of makes us a lot harder to guard than we were last year. So just having a lot of versatile players is going to help us, you know, improve a lot this year. 
All right, that next step, Brad, the 8, 9, 10 wins for North Dakota State. How do they get it done? Well, first of all, they, they needed to get it done on the road a little bit more there. But even though they don't have very many players back, three of their top four scorers back, and then they have five new players, but those are three D1 transfers, two JUCO players. So those are players with experience that can come in and help this program right away. All right, let's see if the Bison keep moving up. Oral Roberts has finished fourth in the regular season in the last three years. It's been SDSU, USD in some order, and then somebody else, and then Oral Roberts, and they're picked to finish fourth again this year. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of been their familiar spot. Uh, again, uh, Missy Cousin there, she's got a team, that, again, that brings back some good toughness, some good size, and they've got a fantastic score in Kenny Joe Lippi. So this is a team that, again, appears to be poised to kind of be near that top. Can they ever make a run and make a, you know, make a run towards one of those top spots? We'll see. Maybe this could be the year. They've got a dynamic player that could become maybe the player of the year. We'll see. All right, here is head coach uh, Misty Cousin with our David Brown. They really compete, uh, and their motor is very, very solid. So, and it's that investment year because we really understand that even though there's a lot of teaching and investment that goes on, because we're young, we're going to kind of get to ride the wave of the investment for this season for the next three to four years as well. So it, it's fun. When you, when you begin to see everything through the eyes of so many freshmen, everything's new, again, for the first time for us as coaches as well, and, and that's – that's always um, – it, it, it brings about a little bit of a revival for me, I think, as a coach a lot of times. You guys have been so close the past couple seasons. Yeah. You know, I think you've gotten to the Summit League tents, tournament semifinals five of the last six years, three in a row. You always run into the South Dakota teams, whether it's State or, or USD. What right. will it take to, to get over the hump, to compete for a tournament championship? Because yeah. you have been in that upper echelon and so close so many times. Right. We, we've always just kind of had a missing piece, I felt like. Um, I felt like maybe two seasons ago um, when our seniors were Lakota Beatty and Jordy Gilbert, um, we just didn't have the balance of consistent inside post play, whether that was defensively or offensively. You know, we had a really special scoring guard in Lakota. Um, Jordy Gilbert was one of the best defenders on the ball. Uh, but we just were a little shallow. We really could probably only go about seven, maybe eight deep that year. Last year, we had tons of seniors, but we just didn't have a true point guard that could kind of knit everything together and just be the playmaker or the on-ball defender that we needed uh, going down the stretch. So there's always kind of been just that important piece that you could kind of stay in the race for a while, but maybe depth hurt you or maybe just balance scoring hurt you a little bit or just the ability to, to make the play. I absolutely believe that we have all of those positions covered this year. I just won't take the opportunity in October to go, oh, yeah, we've got it all covered. And, yeah, watch us coming on, you know. But I do believe that we have those issues addressed. I believe that if we can put ourselves in a position uh, coming down uh, this race this year and be in that semifinal position again, I don't think we'll have those shortcomings that we've had the last couple of seasons. All right, nine and seven in the league last year. And as coach said, got to the tournament semis, lost uh, to USD, who was probably going to beat anybody they faced last year. But uh, Kenny Joe Lippi averaged 18 a game last year. That might go up this year because she is always working on her game. I've had awesome uh, coaches kind of direct me and saying like, hey, let's improve this this year. Let's get better at this. And if your shots aren't going in, let's get better at this part of my game. So I think it's just – having the mindset of wanting to be a whole player in every area of the game. Like if my shots are off, I want to be able to rebound. And if um, like offense isn't going well, like I want to be a great defender. And so just focusing on my game as a whole. She can be a scoring machine, but if, yep. if she does her thing and they really do have all of those other spots filled, like Coach was talking yeah. about, could be really good. They really could be good. Now, Lippy's the key, right? She's the player that they really are going to rely on. A lot's going to be on her shoulders, but she's going to need that supporting cast around her. But like you said, if they can come along with that, I do like Oral Roberts and what they could do in this league. All right, we will get into the top three in the preseason poll when we come back. Western Illinois is one of the top young players in the league coming back. We'll Check out the fun bunch from McComb coming up. And the Jackrabbits. They've got a grad transfer point guard and a couple of first team all summer league players. The story on what SDSU has in store coming up next. Welcome back to the Summer League Women's Basketball season preview. The only team in the last nine years knew it, other than South Dakota or South Dakota State, to win the Summer League regular season and the postseason tournament is. 
Of course, Western Illinois. Western Illinois did it. Uh, they're always hanging around. You don't want to go to Macomb and play them because they're always good there. What's up with Western Illinois? Well, J.D. Gravina does a terrific job coaching his team on the offensive win and their style of play. They love to play a high-possession game, and then they play a little bit different defensively. They'll take some chances at times. I felt like last year that did not serve them well. They had some games where they really struggled slowing teams down and rebounding the basketball. We'll see maybe if he adjusts his philosophy a little bit this year. All right, Western has a uh, junior named Evan Zars, probably going to be a top 10 player in the league this year. Here is J.D. Gravina on Zars and his team coming up. Evan, I think, is someone who she, – she had a really – I was really happy with her year um, last year as a sophomore. Um, but as someone who just has a, an almost unlimited ceiling. And, uh, boy, I hate to make this comparison, but, but she literally has every, every tool and ability that Ashley Luke had for us. Um, the only thing that Ashley had was just an extreme aggressiveness with wanting the ball and then once she got it, going to score with it. And uh, Evan, I think, is slowly but surely kind of learning how to, to get that aggressiveness. And there's nothing holding her back from being a kid that averages 16, 18, 20 points and 10 or 12 rebounds. And then uh, Gilmore, Pryor, Nichols, there's some familiar names that everybody around the league knows uh, coming back this year, right? Yeah, and I think, uh, boy, I think, you know, all those kids have a, uh, could have really big years for us. I mean, Grace – Gilmore is, is one of the, the best athletes um, I've coached. I mean, quick with the ball in her hands, uh, you know, and, and she's a kid that can create. A lot of people don't really realize this, but she's one of our, one of the best passers and creators for other people that I've coached. And so what I'm trying to get her to um, kind of continue to do is, is create, you know, more for other people, almost the way Emily Clemens did, even though she found a way to lead the league in, in scoring when she led the league in assists. But, you know, Grace is a kid that could lead the league in assists. She kicks out as good as anyone. She makes little dump passes to post. And when we have players like Evan down there wanting the ball and Danny Nichols wanting the ball, um, I think an important thing will be to put some more shooters around her. You know, we've always been a team that chucked up a lot of threes, even when we did have good post players. And uh, really the last two years we shot it really poorly. And so that's been something both in how we've been working even this year um, with our approach and in recruiting is putting some more shooters out there with a kid like Grace that can, that can uh, make a, a defense really guard. And I think that's where a kid like Sam Pryor comes in, you know, just a knockdown shooter. Um, we also have a fresh, uh, two of our freshmen, Mallory McDermott and Adidas, that are phenomenal shooters. So, uh, and then a lot of kids that maybe you weren't familiar with last year that, that have the ability to shoot it really well, a kid like Elizabeth Lutz that should step in and play. Um, but yeah, then you have, you know, Danny and I would add Carla Flores. She came on kind of late last year as a redshirt freshman, but uh, those kids are just so solid and they can do a little bit of everything. They move well. You know, Danny can handle the ball so well in the open floor and is really fast with the ball in her hands, getting to the basket. She shoots it well, not a lot, but uh, I, I think that she, you know, she had a period last year where she was super sick for like a month um, and it really held her back. And then she got going about the last, you know, three weeks mm -hmm. of the season again. And I, I think if she can stay healthy, uh, she could really be a tremendous player as well. Talk about the childhood photos on the website. That's fabulous. Yeah, that was kind of just a cool idea. We haven't got to do team pictures yet. And um, we saw someone do the bitmojis, everyone's bitmoji, which we thought was a cool idea. And we kind of, our SID Manya had that. And uh, it was funny. Yeah. Some of them are, are hilarious, I think. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. And we don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to have fun with things. Yeah, go to the team website. The photos are adorable, especially JD's, right? Uh, Western tied for third in the league last year. We got knocked out by Oral Roberts in the uh, first round of the tournament. And as he said, Gravina thinks that Zars could double that scoring average to 18 this year. Zars says she is working on it. Yeah, that's been a really big focus ever since, really. He kind of started talking to me about it when I was leaving the Summit League tournament, actually. And he was talking to me about what he wants next year and what he expects. And it's definitely really exciting. And I've been trying to focus on it a lot and definitely being more aggressive on the offensive end and looking to score and not getting frustrated when I don't also. So um, yeah, we've definitely been going over that a lot with him and also my dad has been working with me a lot and my brother and playing against different competition when I can since we were all home over the summer. So just trying to get more comfortable and confident as I go is definitely a big step for me, but I think we're going in the right direction.
And as a team, usually no problem scoring points yep. for Western Illinois. But J.D. talked about it a little bit. They shot 28% yeah. at the three-point line last year, and that's got to get better. Yeah, it does, because they do shoot a lot of them, so they rely on that. But I tell you, if Zars can have that kind of year where she doubles her point production, she's going to draw a lot of defensive attention inside, maybe double teams. That will free up some shooters. All right, uh, South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits picked to finish second in the preseason poll, although they got to 11 of the 36 uh, first-place votes in that poll. Kind of an off year last year, you could say, uh, compared to other years, all kinds of injuries. They still go 13-3 and three in the Summit League. Yeah, every coach in America would take your off year still winning yeah. over 20 games and having that kind of record in your conference. But, of course, they lost Maya Sellen, who was arguably their best player early in the year, so she was out, and that certainly affected the team I think especially on the offensive end, because when you look at the statistics, SDSU was terrific defensively, maybe one of their best defensive teams they ever had. And that kept them in a lot of games. I think if they keep that in place, build on that, and get back to clicking offensively like they have in the past, watch out. The Jacks uh, brought in a grad transfer named Haley Greer, who it sounds like is going to step in and play quite a, li uh, quite a bit at the point guard spot. We start with that with SDSU head coach Aaron Johnston. Yeah, well, Haley Greer is a, a graduate transfer, comes to us from Colgate. Um, you know, graduated Riley last year with such a good, solid point guard and been in our system for a while. It just really opened up a need to add another player that has experience in that position. So we talked to a lot of people that were kind of in that graduate transfer world because we wanted somebody that had experience and also would be eligible and uh, kind of narrowed in on, on, you know, Haley throughout that process. And she was, um, just a perfect fit. She is such a good dynamic personality because it's hard to be a grad transfer. You, you have you know, three years of a system and all of a sudden you jump into another one and you're expected to pick it up in the matter of you know, months and then play at a high level. And so you know, she just had a personality that I think fit our team really well and, and would really connect with, with the people, really high basketball IQ. And uh, she just adds another kind of important piece to a, a team that probably lost a lot when we, we graduated Riley. So she's been a good fit for us, and we're enjoying the heck out of her. Yeah, um, Yeah. other than that point guard spot, you look up and down, you could put a lineup of six foot one across the board if you wanted to out there. The, talk about the other, the other positions other than the point guard spot. Well, I don't uh, look down much in practice. I'm looking up to a lot of people yeah. out there, you know. And, and for us, I think that's really been done through those kind of, like you mentioned, the wing, kind of three, four, even twos, like Tylee. You know, as a two for us, she's a six foot two guard. And to be quite honest, we might even use her a little bit at some one just because of how she's grown and evolved this year. And so we could have a team that has five, you know, six foot tall plus players on the floor. And so we really love that versatility. And I think we've worked hard to kind of get back to that. Uh, a few years ago, we were a little more guard orientated and we scored a lot from the one two spot. And I think now we're getting back to our more traditional uh, three, four, five. Uh, those big, long, athletic wings that can do a lot of different things. Uh, and I really like that part of our team. Maya's back and really healthy. I think people will be just really pleasantly surprised to see the kind of shape she's in and, and just not having to limp around. Um, this is the best she's, you know, performed so far early on uh, in her career and the healthiest she's been. Tori's back and doing really well. And Yeah, we just have a really group, good group of, of uh, versatile good young people that'll fit well into our system. During games when it seems like you're not doing what you want to do in a half and you talk to players after the game, they say at halftime, talk about defense, turn on the defensive switch more than anything, right? I think so. I mean, I think offensively we've made some adjustments over the years for sure, but we've had a bit of a similar plan. Uh, but defensively, I think over the years we've had dramatic changes. I, you know, six, seven years ago, we hardly played zone, and now in the last couple of years, we're playing a lot more zone than we ever used to, and we're working at it. We're not just kind of throwing it in and drawing it up in the dirt. We're trying to be a really good zone team and add that to what we do. We've added some full court pressure, which we never used to do. Um, used to switch more. Now we probably switch a little more selectively. Uh, we handle ball screens really different. So I think we've evolved a lot over the years, and some of that comes from just how the style of play in college is. You know, the, what, what's happening now offensively for teams is so different than what happened you know, even four or five years ago. So offensively, you can kind of be who you are and stick to that plan. But defensively, I think you really got to change with, with the game. And the Jackrabbits have tried to do that. Uh, obviously, the Jacks all the way to the title game last year again before falling to the South Dakota. Peyton Burkhard, 14 points a game last year. Maya Sellen missed the last 24 games last year because of injury.
yeah, it was tough. Definitely not fun, but um, ultimately I think I learned a lot from it. And um, maybe even more importantly, I was able to kind of get my body feeling right and um, kind of take care of all those injuries that I was having. So I'm feeling really good, really excited to be able to compete again with my teammates. And um, I'm just really looking forward to this year, whatever, however it turns out. Big thing to have her back. She'll have two years. Yep. She'll be just a junior. But you heard Coach talking about uh, playing different defensively over the years. South Dakota, you've seen that, haven't you? Yeah, and this is a team that's been willing to adjust how they play based on their personnel. And you heard him talk about in the interview there, too, the length and the size that they can put on the floor if they want to. I mean, I'm not sure – there's any team in the Summer League and very few in the country that could put a lineup of five players over six foot that are all very athletic and can move. Uh, that's what makes playing zone maybe attractive for a team like SDSU. They can really cover some ground when they can do that. And Mike Jewett, the associate head coach, yeah. Aaron's assistant, has uh, kind of taken over defensively. Maybe talk to A.J. into that a little bit. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. I think some coaches are reluctant to go to that zone, but I tell you, it worked well for them at times last year. And you go back to that Summer League Championship game, I felt like SDSU really didn't have the same talent level that USD did, but they were able to hang in that game because of their defense. They held USD to the low 60 points, if I remember right, in that game and almost won it. All right, that brings us to the Coyotes. The defending Summit League champs are the preseason favorites to repeat. USD lost a lot, but they got a lot coming back. Welcome back, and now to number one in the preseason poll. The University of South Dakota had one of the all-time great Summit League seasons going last year, unbeaten in the regular season, Summit League tournament champions, and then we will never know because it got shut down after the Summit League tournament was done. But what a run they had. It was an amazing run. I mean, this is a team, when you look at the last national poll, they finished 11th in the coaching mm. poll in the nation. This is a team that only lost two games all year. Um, I think they were poised to make a great run in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I think it broke all of our hearts to see them not get that opportunity in a great team that they had last year. All right, uh, here is Jay Elson with USD head coach Don Plitzoit. The South Dakota women coming off arguably the most successful season in program history. 30 wins, Summit League titles in the regular season and the Summit League tournament. And then, of course, program highs in national rankings. And here to talk a little bit more about that is fifth-year head coach Don Plitzaway. And Don, has it sunk in yet, all that you were able to accomplish last season? Well, we certainly had a very special group of young ladies, and they competed at an incredibly high level and continued, I think, to get better throughout the course of the season. But I think probably one of their most significant accomplishments is that when the season was over and everything changed for us and we actually ended up taking classes online for the last stretch of – of the school year that our young ladies finished the year as the academic national champions. We had the highest team GPA in the country. And that's something that we're certainly very proud of is that is how they continue to be their best throughout difficult situations. On the floor with all that success, um, the target of course is going to get a little bit bigger. Teams are going to want to beat you even more now than they, they had previously, just based on what you guys have accomplished. So with that in mind, how are you approaching the follow-up campaign and what, what's the message been like to the team to this point? Well, the bottom line is we have to focus every day to be our, our best and work on the, the basic, simple, fundamental skill sets that are going to allow us to continue to get better. And that's something that doesn't change, even though we have a lot of new faces on our team this year. Obviously, you lose some significant ones in Kira Duffy, the mid-major player of the year, Taylor Frederick, Madison McKeever, Megan Bonar as well. But, but those first three – Huge production for you throughout their careers. And now you've got a bunch of new players to figure out how to work into the mix. So how quickly do you expect them to be able to help you? And what's the process of working them into the mix going to be like? Because in a year like this, obviously, it might be more important than ever to get them up to speed quickly. Well, I think you're right in the, the fact that it's going to be important, J4, for all of our young ladies to be ready to play because we just don't ever know what can transpire. And, and that's like that every year, but this year even to a different level because of potential quarantine or potential isolation situations. With that being said, I think our, our five seniors have done a tremendous job of, of helping teach our, our young ladies who haven't seen significant action on the court, if at any action yet, 
And so I think those seniors are doing a tremendous job of helping us, us coach and, and teach our, our young ladies, which is really, really important because we're trying to coach through those masks and they can't even understand what we're saying half the time. Don Plitzoy, three-time Summer League Coach of the Year, just in her fifth season there. But look at last year, 30-2, 16-0 in the Summer League. There's only been three unbeaten regular seasons in 28 years of Summer League women's basketball. Two of those have been by USD in the last three years under Coach Plitzoy. And again, they were the Summer League Tournament champions last year. Hannah Shervin back, the Defensive Player of the Year last year. Monica Arns is back. So is Chloe Lamb who takes over as one of the team leaders this year. But even just being able to play with those girls and know what the expectations are, and, and this being my fourth year here and, and our entire senior class fourth year here, um, you know, we've kind of tried to know the ins and outs and, and help those young kids because we know we're going to need their help. But I think, you know, we've all found our own little way to – to fill the void a little bit, I think. And, and it's not just one person at all. It's it's everyone. Chloe Lamb made a ton of big shots last year. Talk about her a little bit. She kind of deferred to what they had there last year with Duffy and some of those players. And so I think she's going to step up this year. I really expect her numbers. Obviously, she's going to have more shots, a huger role in their offense. And the thing is, even though USD lost a lot, Tom, they have five seniors back. And you heard Chloe Lamb talk about it. It's not just five seniors that haven't been together for a long time. These guys have been together for four years. And so I think they've got a great leadership nucleus to, again, be a great team because of that. But with Kira Duffy gone, Maddie McKeever gone, Taylor Frederick gone, three other best players they've ever had there, uh, what do the Yotes have to do to step up without those three players? Well, I think the big thing is who steps in and fills that uh, role that Kira Duffy had. When the game was on the line, if there was a tight situation and they really needed something to happen offensively, they got the basketball into her hands. Who is that going to be this year? Is it going to be Shervin inside? Because she certainly poses a lot of problems for teams in the paint, you know, trying to guard her one-on-one. -on -one. Is it Chloe Lamb who can really shoot the basketball like we already mentioned? But they've got weapons still offensively. I think this is a team that's really going to be tough to slow down. Yeah, it was Lamb a lot in some of those late-game yep. situations last year, even with Kira Duffy there. And just to hit on uh, Hannah Shervin one more time, Defensive Player of the Year last year, We have, there have not been a lot of players like her in the Summit League with that much size and that much ability. Exactly, and I think she gets undersold a lot. I mean, they had a great one-two punch with her and Frederick last year in the low post. We'll see how it goes now that Sherman will probably get more minutes on the floor. Can she stay out of foul trouble? But she is such a presence on both ends of the floor. I mean, I you know, defensive player of the year, and you can't underestimate what she does to protect the paint and the rim for this team defensively too. All right, let's amble through the preseason all Summit League first team. And again, this is voted on by the coaches, some of the media members, uh, sports information people at the Summit League schools. And Peyton Burkard paired up there with Maya Sellen, the Jackrabbits with two of the top six players supposedly going into the season. And I have no problem with either one of them, Tom, being on the preseason all Summit League team. Peyton Burkhardt really had a great season last year, you know, coming into her own as a sophomore and becoming a double-digit scorer when Maya Sellen wasn't able to play. A lot of the load offensively fell onto Burkhardt, and she really did well with that. And now you got Sellen to come alongside her. you got two fantastic scores for Aaron Johnston. And the same story for USD, as we just talked about with Chloe Lamb and Hannah Shervin. Shervin, by the way, the preseason player of the year. And I thought Sherman very deserving of that because, again, of the way she can affect the game on both ends of the floor. Terrific score down low, great rebounder, great shot blocker. And then, yeah, we already mentioned Chloe Lamb, a terrific player from the perimeter that can really shoot the basketball. So USD, again, has two terrific players right there. Kenny Joe Lippi from Oral Roberts, uh, 18 and a half a game last year, right behind Madison Nelson at the top of the scoring charts in the Summit League. And then Mariah Murdy, a junior from Omaha. Yeah, I think with Kenny Joe Lippi, first of all, you've got a player that can really take over a game, and that makes uh, Oral Roberts a dangerous team, quite frankly, because she can really get hot and can really fill it up. Mariah Murdy, probably one of the best young players in the league. We really saw her take a big step last year. Six foot three, can really run, and is very athletic. We'll see. Can she now take another step? Coaches and the media really think so, putting her here on the first team. 
All right, going to be interesting. Midco Sports Network will be your home all season long for live uh, Summer League coverage whenever and wherever they happen. We're not sure until we get into the Summer League season, but we're locking down some dates, uh, hopefully in December, for some of our Summer League schools. The Summer League tournament still set for the first weekend in March. And again, touch on the schedule again, yeah. how that's going to be just, it's going to be different and a little odd uh, playing the same team on Friday and Saturday in one location. South Dakota State will host South Dakota in one weekend. They won't play those games in Vermilion. Yeah, that's a big example right there. So that's going to create some odd things. But I tell you what, if you love hoops, uh, you can lock yourselves in to Friday and Saturday night. We've got a great pattern schedule to follow this year for Summer League play. All right, our thanks to Ryan Powell and everybody at the Summer League office, to the coaches and the players for playing along here in the preseason show. We'll see you out there at a Summer League hoops game.